interview part one with um, Sin Jones, uh, someone who seems to be a Satanist, but they didn't identify themselves as such. Uh, and you can tell by the pictures that it does seem to be the case. For sure. Yep. <laughs> I had to drive out because my cell phone doesn't work that well in my house. And, you know, for me to for me to record it, I had to, you know, I don't have a speakerphone on my house phone, so yeah. So it's okay if I record uh it's okay if I record it, right? Yeah, follow me. All right, so you have these um, pictures on your profile, you know, one of like, you know, something says the devil made me do a t-shirt. You have baby head, you know, like a, a plastic baby head. Um, you have this one where there's this devil given reading, reading some kind of a book to a naked woman. Do you want to tell me about those? Why don't you tell me about them? Because you're the one that made the comment about my photos. So obviously you see something very particular when you see this t-shirt, when you see this baby head, when you see this other photograph. So what does it say to you when you see them? It, it says to me that um, I, I see a link between Satanism, um, perhaps atheism, and perhaps feminism. Because uh, it's the feminists who are pro-abortion, you know, pro-choice rather, but some of them are Satanists who, you know, want to abort babies. Um, I, I, so now, I, how would you define what Satanism is? Is it anything that goes against the Christian orthodoxy that you follow? Uh, anything that uses any satanic symbolism, whether it's atheistic Satanism or whether it's kind of classic Satanism that actually worships Lucifer. Anything that uses, you know, Satan as an icon or the image or, you know, as an idol or, or you know, as the liberator of women or anything like that. So, but what, but what is Satan? So, like, for example, would you say that Satan is the, the devil made me do a t-shirt? Um, little, little cutesy kind of cartoon character with little pitchfork. <laughs> is, that, is that Satan? No, the, the inverted pen pentagram picture, though, is, and... That's Satanism, and the, the Baphomet heads, the, the things that resemble the Baphomet heads, um, the way they're laid out. Where, and where are you seeing, where are you seeing inverted pentagrams and, and Baphomet heads in my profile photo? I saw one with a picture of a, you know, I saw one inverted pentagram that was in a picture of a bunch of stuff. It was like a, a it was like a, a lot of the things in the picture were black, and it was like this, you know, the five-point star pointed down in a circle. Uh, I don't recall such a picture. I, I mean, you'd have to be a... Is it my photograph, or is it something I'm talking about? It, it's in your photos. Um, on my Google? Yes. Because there's lots of photos in my Google that aren't necessarily... I don't know. Stuff in my house? I don't have any inverted pentagrams in here, so if it was something I photographed in my house, it would probably be an upright pentagram. <laughs> I do have one of those, but... Well, I'll, I'll put it in. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'll put it in the pictures when I make the video, and I'll show you. Um, what okay. about What about the, the devil figure reading from a book to a naked woman who's white-colored? Uh, well, repeat that again. There, there's a devil picture, a picture of a devil. It's like part of some kind of object. Um, I'm doing this all from memory. Uh, there's a picture of this devil. I believe he's reddish. And he's, he's reading from some sort of a book to a, a naked woman who is colored white. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what photographs you're referencing here. Because, you know, on Google, you know, there's there's photographs that are posted in particular groups that I, I might be tagged in that aren't necessarily mine. But, but, the, but the point is, is you see these images and you think that this is what Satan is. It is. It's the use of particular symbols. Well, let me ask you this. Do you live in the United States? Yes. Do you pledge allegiance to the flag? No. You don't? You don't consider yourself an American citizen under the flag of the United States? Well, I'm an American citizen, but I don't agree with the government or patriotism. Okay, but so when you see the stars on the flag, do you, do you consider these satanic stars? Um, I, I consider them occult stars. I wouldn't necessarily say satanic, but I, I believe the people who control the greater occult movements the major occult movements, I believe they are Satanists. Uh, Satanists, I mean. So what, well, what are the great, I guess these are some of the questions that I was posing to you upon your YouTube channel. What are specifically the greater occult movements? Uh, Would you consider it a particular author, a particular religion? 
religion, a particular school of thought. Like, in other words, where does the, where does the movement originate? Go ahead, who is following it, and where do you think it's going? Well, I, I think these movements borrow from other movements, so it's kind of hard to say where they originate. They, they go back thousands of years, depending on how you look at it. But I would say the major movement is Freemasonry. Then you also have Theosophy, the Madame Vlatsky and them. Um, Aleister Crowley, the Golden Dawn, and the Hermetic Orders that he started, um, which are, some of them are still around today. And yeah, I think Okay, so all right, if you suppose that with the religion that you follow, aren't they all essentially aiming towards the same thing, which is the Godhead? Um, no, I think I think that they, they view Lucifer as the real God who's trying to intellect he's trying to who's the intellectual guy. He's trying to enlighten people. They, they believe he's a light bearer. Because if you look at Albert Pike's quotes, he says that he wants to, you know, indoctrinate Masons on the highest level into the Luciferian doctrine. He says that... But there's, there's plenty of Masons that don't consider Pike to have been a Mason. More like a charlatan who just wrote a bunch of probably good books. Like an outside perspective. Like, in other words, he's not speaking from a position of personal experience. He's speaking from, you know, like a spectator sport. Kind of like what you're doing. You're spectating vehicle <laughs> and making opinions based on your speculation like for example what would i have anything to do with now you you said that i you said on the comment that i was a satanist practicing witchcraft and that i must hate you because something proof in the pudding which i don't know what you're referring to because i didn't i didn't make any comment to that effect i didn't say i hate you i hate your opinions i was just asking you questions based on the content matter that you are offering in your video. So red flags go up for me when you make a claim and you don't, you don't really actually like back them up with anything. You haven't actually said anything. Like when I asked you what the occult was, you simply just said it was knowledge, hidden. <laughs> okay, all right, so if it's hidden, and it's hidden from you especially, then what are you spectating? Maybe, maybe you're forming opinions based on knowledge that you don't have. Well, it's hidden, right? Well, it, it's hidden, but you can research it, you know. It, it's hidden in the sense that people, it's not openly taught. You know, they don't tell you what it is. But if you research Masonic authors like Robert Hewitt Brown, 32nd Degree Mason, um, and, and others, you can find the knowledge for yourself. You know, it's hidden in a way that you can find it if you really dig deep, you know. And that's... But who should it be taught by? You said it's not taught. So do you believe that these subjects should be taught in school? Is that what you're referring to? What? Because, you know, there's a difference between being educated and learning. So maybe you're interested in the occult, which is why you go off and you go learn about it to demystify information that you only have, like, a cursory introduction to. Like, if you see a symbol, you think it means fill in the blank, but then you go research it further, and then you find out that it maybe has many meanings, like most symbols. A lot of symbols are apprehended and used. Like, for example, the, the inverted star is obviously used by... Um, the, the morning stars, you know, the, 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 basically the auxiliary group to the fraternal order of the Masons. So a bunch of women that aren't allowed to be Masons, but they're an auxiliary group, and they support the fraternal order, which is what? Just a gentleman's club. They all just kind of scratch their own backs, do their own thing. Free grouping of individuals, maybe it's anarchic, you know, in a sense. It's sort of, you know, anarchy. In, in relation to how society runs as a whole. Like maybe instead of going to the cops about something, maybe they handle it in-house. That's an example. So so what, what agenda and what is so quote unquote satanic about Masons? Well, um, to claim that you have some special knowledge that God did not give you makes you a false prophet. To say that I'm going to reveal you this mystical, magical knowledge and give you the true hidden meaning to reach your true potential, which is what they preach, that's satanic. That is doing, you know, that is being a wolves in sheep's clothes. You're pretending to be a teacher. All right, so, all right, so based, on, based on that statement, how is that different from the information that is presented to most people via the Bible. Doesn't it also make the same claim that it has the information that has come directly from God? Now, we all know this is all written by human beings, right? We all know that these are a bunch of scrolls collected, put into a grammar, which is why it's called the Bible. It's derivative of previous 
stories that are basically been passed from civilization to civilization, et cetera, twisted terms, interpreted in many different ways to do what? To control information, right? To say, I have the way, I am the one. If you want to reach, you know, the golden kingdom, you got to read this book and follow this information. Isn't it the same thing that you're criticizing? Well, um, I think that, that it boils down to, you know, of the moral compass as well. Um, the, the idea of keeping something secret, you know, is, is what people who are immoral do, you know. The truth shall come to the light. I believe there's some sayings in the Bible that we all know they're true as soon as we hear them. But when you hear Mason... Okay, so if we know that they're true, if we know that they're true, then it's obviously if we use, say, for example, if we use Jesus as uh, an example of a prophet, maybe not the prophet, but maybe a prophet, okay? So he basically brings the old stuff into a new era, a new way, but he doesn't dismiss the old way. So everything that's in Old Testament still applies. There's plenty of things that are in practice in Old Testament and in New Testament that would be considered immoral by the societal standards. You know what I mean? Like rape, slavery, um, animal sacrifice, various, <laughs> various practices that may be considered obsolete in a modern era, but if you're a true believer and you believe that this book is the guidebook, then, you know, if you don't follow and do certain things, and, you know, which is why the Jews, you know, have specific um, uh, rituals and things that they do because they're starting to still try to be as true to Old Testament as they possibly can legally. <laughs> you know, animal sacrifices, I mean, can't keep slaves anymore, right? At least not in the United States. Well, I, I, you, can't, you, can't, you can't trade a woman for, you know, two goats and a cow for marriage. Well, Jesus... But Jesus didn't say, well, he's the prophet, right? If he's one of those, you know, reputable prophets that people are supposed to follow. He doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, all that stuff in Old Testament, pay that no, never mind. No. He, there's actual quotes by various apostles that said, Jesus said, dot, dot, dot. All this stuff still applies. Um, maybe it's not known. Maybe it's kind of quote-unquote hidden from people. Maybe they don't focus too much on Old Testament as they do New Testament. Because, you know, there's a lot of focus on New Testament. <laughs> yeah. So, maybe that's not what's taught, right? Maybe it's only taught in a very distorted manner that it has led people to believe that follow this religion that Old Testament no longer applies. Well, I, I do think the Old Testament, for the most part, no longer applies because Jesus said he didn't come to break the New Testament, I mean, the, the Old Covenant, but to fulfill it. He wasn't saying that you have to do everything. That, he was saying that we've entered a new age where there's a new set of rules for non-Jews, not just Jews. So if you're not a Jew, you don't have to do things a certain way that the Jews did. You have to do it a new way. One thing he said that it's not what goes into a, a man's mouth that makes him dirty. It, it's what comes out of it. And the Jews were given, um, were told what to eat and what not to eat. So that right, that right there shows you that he's changing things, you know, for the for a new age, so to speak. For for a, uh, he, he came at a certain point in time to be the Messiah to save all people a certain way. So I. I but isn't that, isn't that also why the Jews killed him? Because they thought he was a false prophet, a false messenger, because he was distorting what the original. Stories. I mean, this was all propagated before it was all written down, right? These are stories that have been passed on as an oral tradition. You know, what God wants, what God expects, etc., etc. So they were, what, another one of those fraternal orders that were hiding all the information, and thus they were satanic? Um, yes, the Jews of the time, the Pharisees, were satanic. And in 70 AD, when the Romans destroyed their temple and they, they fled to Babylon, they started writing the Talmud which is very satanic. It says you can have sex with children. It says Jesus is burning in hell in excrement or something like that. You know, they, the, the Jews, from that point on, the secret societies that ran the Jews, the cabal, the, I, the word cabal, I believe, is derived from Kabbalah. You know, this kind of witchcraft, this kind of plotting behind the scenes, this kind of group of elders manipulating the world, that is satanic. That's why Jesus said that you are, beware the fake Jews who are really of the synagogue of Satan. You said you are like Okay, so if I'm hearing you if I'm hearing you correctly, um, the definition of satanic is the people people or powers that control and manipulate information and people. 
All right, so I'm going to continue this in part two, but no, that's not what I said. I'll clarify it in part two. Stay tuned.